I'll make a motion to open a select board meeting for October 16th at uh, 5 p.m. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. All right, and I will open the Finance Committee meeting for October 16th, also at 5 p.m. Um, so I think we're gonna skip the minutes and put them at the end. Um, we're gonna start with zoning and hopefully get through the zoning very quickly. Um, and then if anybody else on Finance Committee agrees with me, I'd like to reopen the discussion of the highway funding. Um, so we'll wait till that point to get to that. So beginning with zoning, um, I emailed Denise, chair of the planning board is here. I emailed her the questions I could remember from what we had um, talking. So let's start, let's start at the end and work backwards. So let's work with article nine, which is the floodplain district bylaw. Um, the one question I had was in section, oh gosh. The one where it grandfathered building yeah. and that's removed, um, section 4707 or something like that. Do you have that handy? Um, yeah, 4307. 4307. 4307. Okay. You know, if you look at 4307, I mean, that's where that, okay, that whole section is actually. Is actually, shoot, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, you know, I, I spoke with Peggy Sloan again today just to clarify a few questions, and mm -hmm. things are grandfathered. It's actually 4,300. So let's see, let me just, yeah. Yeah, for, it, at, every. Existing buildings are grandfathered. For instance, if we have an agricultural building, let's say a barn, and someone wants to build up, they have that's you, they can by right do that. You know, just go through to the building mm -hmm. commissioner if they want to add. That's for ag. That's for ag. Any other building that is already in is grandfathered in. It's just oh, any it new building. Yes, it is. Okay, um, yeah. because the the section I had the question about is right here 4307 it says permitted uses and it okay. used to say buildings lawfully existing prior to adoption of these provisions and that's crossed out um you see right here where i shared it oh okay yeah i've got that open buildings lawfully existing prior to the adoption but it might be because this section actually says following uses are okay if they cause yeah. no obstruction and they do not require structures, structures. And so if there's yeah. a building, it's not a structure. So maybe it's just in the wrong section. Is that what the problem is? I, you know, I think so. Cause Peggy did move things. I'll tell you, we, we worked on this for close to six months. So by the end of okay. that, my head sort of spinning, but no, I mean, I, ch I checked with her again. She said, no, it's definitely grandfathered. That is not an issue. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have questions on the floodplain article? And just to make that clear that if we do not adopt that, anybody who wants to get flood insurance is out of luck. So that is basically a no brainer and has to be stated out front. So we don't have any questions about that. Um, I just want to add too that if we have to have this update, for um, application to hazardous mitigation grants, which we will be applying for for our roads mm -hmm. uh, in this coming year, that ha we have have to have this update. Right. Okay. Thanks, um, John. Go ahead. You're muted. I'm assuming there's no downside to this, but I just wanted to ask it to be sure. The, the, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see a downside to it. The downside is that if we don't adopt it, uh, people are in trouble. <laughs> That's a downside, a big Thank downside. I just wanted to yeah. just make sure. Thank you. Yep, definitely. Okay, next question. Anybody else have questions on the floodplain article? So we have not yet voted on this. Anybody like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve the floodplain article number. Article nine. Nine. Yep. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? 
All right, we'll do a roll call vote. John Pareski. Aye. John Pareski. Julie, Chal Julie Chalfin, aye. James Cambius. Aye. James Cambius, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. David Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. All right, that's unanimous. How many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six of us. Six zero zero. Okay, Article Eight. Oops, it's upside down. Is the conservation subdivision design? And the one question I remember about this was: um, Is there like, can you have a subdivision that's not a conservation subdivision that follows different rules? Um, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, Peggy said that was another question just for clarification. She said yes, but you know, with this, it's it is any creation of five or more lots, whether it's a subdivision or not, and forms a part of a parcel or set of contiguous parcels, blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, that it, it has to be, you have to have 50%. And I, I double checked with Peggy on that. And I also did research on that. And that is basically um, common practice. That is what everyone in Franklin County, some are a little more stringent. I forget who she said, was it Shootsbury is a little more stringent. But I checked in other parts of the state, and actually, the um, yeah, the open space residential development. It's a model bylaw um, from the state. They're saying basically the same thing. So you know, the whole conservation subdivision was sorely outdated, and that's what I mean. We deferred to Peggy on this because she is the expert. <laughs> On, on this. So when we went through the whole section, she just got it up to where it should be. And, you know, I know that's because I did watch the meeting and I think there was a question about any kind of um, tax implications for the open space. That's above my pay grade that you would, uh, again, I looked that up and you would have to defer to the assessor's office because I think they could look at that and potentially make a decision on that. If not the assessors, the assessors along with the select board, if there's any, um, you know, any positive, you know, tax, uh, positive tax implications for open space. So, but, but that's, we, it's pretty much gotten up to standard where it should be. I mean, I'm not even sure when our bylaws were updated the last time. From what I could see, maybe it was like 2015. So it's been a long time. Jim, you have a question? Yeah, well, this was what I was what I was wondering about mm -hmm. at our meeting. Um, it, the, the conservation subdivision, as written, says it may be a conservation subdivision. And it includes lots of restrictions on what constitutes you know what you have to comply with to be a conservation subdivision mm -hmm. um what i'm not clear on and i think the rest of us aren't as well is what's why should anyone want to do a conservation subdivision what's the up to you know if you have the well, option of not doing it and not following by these restrictions why wouldn't you do that okay well i think one of the main reasons for conservation is to preserve enhance the community character uh, we want no, that's, to not that's not the question. That's not the question. The question, the question okay. is, okay. if I'm a developer yeah. and I have to save 50% of this for conservation, and that's a pain and an expense, mm -hmm. why would I ever do it? Why wouldn't I do the other? That is a really options. good question. I'll have to go back to the drawing board for the answer for that one, unless anyone else has. <laughs> is there, is there like the site plan review versus the... Um, well, Whatever this other special this, permit is like a site plan easier. It is. It's actually much easier to have the site plan review than the special permit. And that's another reason. Carolyn has her hand up. So, yeah, so go ahead, Carolyn. the original conservation um, subdivision was to make it uh, a trade off. You you had um, the planning board would give up a uh, say say you were only allowed 10 housing lots. You might be able to get 12 or you might have uh, be able to put a smaller road in or some compensation in the site plan review would be given toward for a you know putting this land in restriction the same thing i'm not really clear here but there is incentive and the reason where i'm i think the planning board is updating it is because 
this my we were originally i mean this is like 30 something years ago that we put this in original one and it's just out of date yeah okay i mean so you know I understanding correct that there is another option like somebody could do a set of you could do a standard problems. subdivision that's just standard right that's not a contract not right problem. and right. and so you have to go through the whole site plan review but by putting it in a conservation plan there is the developer is asking to the planning board to waive some kind of restriction whether it's the you know the size of the lots whether it's the size of the road whatever whatever they're asking for they, they get something out of it don't worry it's not free nobody does it for free yeah i mean you know it's a aside from questions on the on the item go ahead mark um what's out of date with section 3660 um how did we go from 20 percent to 50 percent and why um is the planning board going uh to um allow up to 40 percent with with further review how is how is that number derived okay that is exact that that's just what i said before is that that's basically the standard of what um most people, I think most towns, certainly in Franklin County are doing and other towns in Massachusetts. And the reason why, if you want to take, you know, take, take a look at why, I mean, we're talking about climate change. We're, um, we're trying to preserve agricultural land. We're trying to do more cluster housing so there's more open space, um, you know, we, to have more pervious surfaces. I mean, I think that's one of, one of the big reasons um, provide diversifying housing stock. <clears throat> All right. Did that answer your question, Mark? Uh, it did. Okay. Anybody else have questions on this item? So. You know, I just I'm sorry, Julie, I was just going to go back and, and maybe talk to Karen at the assessor's office and see, I mean, I don't know whether it's ever been done, maybe Carolyn knows, but I think, you know, when we, when you guys were asking about tax implications, <clears throat> excuse me, that may be a good conversation to have with her. So if we do face this in the future, another development to make it more attractive that they could have, get a little tax. No, relief. it's never been done. It's never it been hasn't. done. Okay. Okay. People, people submit... Uh, at least in my time on the planning board, never, no one ever submitted anything but a standard subdivision. Okay. All right. Some towns do have a different rate for open space. So that is mm -hmm. something that could be pursued, but it's not like we don't, right. we don't have a separate rate. So it's, it doesn't really no. apply right now. Any other questions on this? My feeling is that this doesn't have significant financial impacts on the town. Um, no. So I would, I, I, I kind of feel like this is one of those, those cases where we can make, we cannot make a recommendation. Um, we have not voted anything on this. So we're looking for a, a motion for something or other, either to approve it or to make no recommendation. Anybody have an opinion? Go ahead, Jim. Um, okay, just for discussion, I move that the finance committee make no recommendation about this uh, war article. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Anyone on finance committee feel like we really should be making recommendation? Go ahead, Dave. I was just going to say, um, if when we do this, um, rather than sort of leave sort of hanging in the air, not, I mean, I'm People don't maybe don't care what we do, but just in case people thought that <laughs> it was important what we do, do we want to sort of add to this new category something along the lines of, um, you know, we make no recommendation because because we don't see that it has a great financial impact. In other words, not that we're sort of at loggerheads with each other and in a split tie and we just can't come up right. with anything. I just right. wonder if there's something that would. Clarify. Actually, I would I would appreciate that because it's it's really what people's impressions are, yes. and, and I know have... as a select board when we have to make comments, <laughs> we say you know we uh, and rather than no comment or uh, you know we, we say that we are not concerned at this point 
or something. Because yeah. like it seems like, Julie, as you know, it's something that we are doing a couple of times now. And yeah. you probably want to make, whoops. Oh. So this is very draft, but I sent this out maybe an hour ago. Um, but this would be what I'm writing up on our deliberations that we would submit to the town that would get handed out with the, the warrant and everything. So Article 7, which we're not talking about right now, what we voted the other day, we said, since there's no financial impacts to the town or residents were identified during the review, the Finance Committee makes no recommendation either for or against this article. Um, I could, we could say the same thing on this one. Does that answer your um answer your question or would you rather have it like the wording of the motion say since no financial impact was or whatever something along those lines um i don't know that it needs to be in the motion if it's a sort of new policy that we are sort of adopting that <clears throat> if we're going to have these kind of things we're going to state it like you say there's no and we've done that before so this isn't new yeah, in, in past, at least last year or the year before, we've had items and and, the, and it did say something like, it didn't just say we make no recommendation. It, it, it was longer. It said because there's no financial impact or something like that. Yeah. Um, when Casey wrote it in the in the motion thingy. <clears throat> so I'm fine with it just being mentioned in the writing, it doesn't have to be in the motion. Okay, any further discussion? All right, um, we'll do a roll call vote. James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. John Presky. Um, are we voting not to say, not to vote no recommendation? I've, I got lost with David's. We are voting. Uh, Yes, we are voting to make no recommendation on this article. John Pereski, aye. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. All right, that's unanimous, 600. 600, no rec. I'm sorry, who made that? Jim made the motion. I made the motion. Mark seconded it. That's correct. Okay, so Article 7, we actually voted the the last meeting and we voted to make no recommendation. Does anyone have questions on it for Denise since we have the expert here? Does anybody, I don't feel the need to reopen it. Does anybody else? No, okay. Thank you very much, Denise. I think we're done with, um, Thank you. with zoning stuff. Did I pass? And thanks for <laughs> calling me an expert. You know, that's... <laughs> With flying colors. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Have fun. Okay. Um, so last meeting we discussed at length the funding, the borrowing for the highway repairs. Um, and at that meeting, finance committee voted to support the full five million for the um highway repairs. I've been thinking about that a lot since that meeting, and I, I really would like to reopen that discussion and have the discussion again. Um, but I'm only going to do that if somebody else on finance committee agrees with me. Um, so I guess I would open uh, to a motion to re-discuss that article or something. Go ahead, Dave. Again, this is more of a, a policy thing, um, but... Um... If we are going, do we have any kind of policy about reopening things that we've already voted on? And, I, and again, I'm just raising this because this has sort of happened in our past deliberations and meetings too. And I'm wondering whether, and I'm not saying I'm totally opposed to it or not, but I'm wondering whether there should be some threshold um, of some kind of, you know, whoever wants something to be redone of stating some kind of case about new information um, has been received or something otherwise you could see how we would be in endless um <clears throat> endless sorry, cycle yeah controversial issues of saying i want i want you know i slept on it and now i want to redo it um because we sort of have to hold ourselves to some kind of 
We do. Stand. So again, I'm just throwing it out as a policy thing that I'm not opposed to reopening this, but but I, I guess I kind of thinking we should state some kind of, uh, there should be some threshold, not be huge, but about why we're doing that. Um, you know, and I, I, I do see like our highway superintendent is um, on the call. So maybe it has something to do with, you know, uh, him, he wasn't not being available last time and bringing more information to us. I don't know, but I just think we should have a brief discussion about is there a need for a threshold before you reopen a vote that we clearly had a discussion on and and took and yep. you know most people were there. Uh, um, yep. I suppose you could have a policy where if somebody wasn't present, they have some right to make a motion to reopen. But still, just, I think we should dis discuss it, not ad nauseum, but just. <laughs> <clears throat> Jim Cambius, go ahead. I don't, that's I don't know. Rules, that's what Robert's rules of order are all about. You know, if you want to bring something up again, you make a motion. If nobody else wants to talk about it, nobody seconds the motion. <laughs> and if people get tired of talking about it, somebody can move to call the question. <laughs> you know, that's why these rules were invented. That's why we go through this, you know, uh, formula. <clears throat> so I, I think Julie has a motion, right? So I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. Oh, did you make a motion, Julie? I move that we reopen the um, highway borrowing for discussion. Second. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> Any discussion on opening it for discussion? Go ahead, John. Well, not about opening it, but I see some inconsistencies, I think, in the votes. I don't know if you want to discuss that at this minute. I see once it was voted 401. I'm sorry, 410, and another one, 500. I don't know if you want to discuss uh, right. that. Right, it was two different votes for two different things. So we've actually already reopened it once. So do you want to discuss that now? What I see? I'm, I could be, I'm probably wrong. But... Um, hang on, hang, hold that thought. Okay. Um, let's, vote, um, let's vote on whether to talk about this. Well, Anybody could we... Have could we... Go ahead. Uh, I mean, just the motion to reopen. Can we get a reason why to reopen it? Yes. Okay. So here's my thought. And the reason I would like to talk about it again is that I think there is no question that a lot of work needs to be done on the highways. Um, what I am very uncomfortable with, and I was uncomfortable with on Thursday and, and it hasn't resolved is that there is no plan. And so we are agreeing to allow, fine. So I, I'm sorry, I should have this all thought out before I said it, but finance committee's role is the financial watchdog for the town. And our role is to ensure that um, we're following the proper methods and that we're making reasonable decisions and that we are guarding the taxpayers' money responsibly. Um, and I, if we have an article for $5 million when we, don't, we didn't have a solid value for how much we had already spent, we didn't have a solid value for the additional work. At, at the time we discussed it last Thursday for the additional work that was out there, and there's has not been any sort of assessment or um, rough order of magnitude analysis by any kind of engineer for the additional work on River Road that needs to be done. I don't feel like that's a responsible thing for the finance committee to have approved. So I went and talked to Kevin earlier today and he has, um, I, I think he's bringing to us a list, a, a, a solid value of what has already been spent, which we kind of had last week. But he also has estimates, um, some bids and some estimates for the remaining work that's out there. Um, so that will help, I, I, I think, us have a more responsible analysis, a, a more responsible way to come up with a dollar value. And then the third piece, which is what to do about River Road, um, in my opinion, what we should do is allocate an amount to have an engineering analysis, um, hire a firm who does this for all the time to come and give us an analysis of what ought to be done in a rough order of magnitude dollar value 
so that we can go forward with a, a an approach and not be guessing that maybe it's $2 million work, worth of work um, with no solid value. That's why I think we need to reopen it. I feel like um, I personally, as a finance committee member, fell down on the job of being the fiscal watchdog for the town by approving this with no plan. That's my rationale. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Dave. So um, obviously all very well stated. And I guess I would just say that I think that a lot of that was stated in our last meeting. And my sense from that last meeting is that we, well, we don't have the power to do the directive, that it was pretty clear that um, the opinion of the committee and I think the select board members who were there also in agreement that maybe that they should be beginning to think about doing the engineering work on River Road um, right. even before the crisis occurs. That's what I took out of that meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And then my understanding of the, I don't, wanna, I don't know what to call it, the buffer or sort of the amount of over and above what we all assumed we had already spent, you know, have receipts for, was essentially to be able to move with some uh, you know, efficiency, I guess I'll say, because nobody wants to, we also had a discussion about wanting to build back better, but that if this thing goes, that, that, that we want the town to be able to get to work on fixing it without having to sort of have further, and again, I'm not an expert, but all the various things that we would need to, to, need to do to get the town to be able to borrow the money that we don't have to be able to do that. So my, I thought we were just getting a, ahead of it and, and, and being efficient, um, and that it was not, a, certainly not a carte blanche for the town to go and spend the money on anything but, um, you know, road repairs. So that's all. Okay. Kevin, did you, um, do you have an estimate? Um, you have the value you've already spent. Were you able to, I, I didn't give you much notice, I realized, um, to yeah, come no, up no with sort of a list of what else you got. Okay, so so we're starting off with the last warrant of 1.309076. And then if you add in Hoosick, Wapping, Hawks, County, Waitley, River Road, three locations, Depot Road, uh, Steam Mill, and then I and then there's a um, there's a hundred thousand dollar for maybe a couple of small miscellaneous uh, locations. So you're looking at a total of 4.17606.00. So, so it's. Yeah, might, might as well call it 4.2. It's close 4. enough. 4.2 million. That we yeah. haven't. And this is. 176. So another. So, so yep. the 4.2 million is work you've already done. Everything. Work that you have Correct. estimates for that you have quotes Correct. for, and then also some work that you don't have quotes for yet that you have estimates Correct. for? Is that, that true? Yeah, well, the, basically what we did was we looked at um, what was done in some of the other areas and, and what the magnitude of it was. And uh, if it was similar, then that, that's pretty much where we came up with the price. Okay. And you said that included River Road, the three spots on River Road that are- Yeah, now that that's, those are, that's not the, Oh man, how do I want to put this? All right, um, all right. So there's three spots on River Road, or there were three spots on River Road. If if you're heading up River Road, you got the first one right there by where Berniski used to live, which is the existing one that we're having problems with now, which is I believe is uh, somewhere in the vicinity of oh god, it's I believe that it's right around five hundred. Five seventeen. Yeah, right around the five hundred. So so there's that one there. That that one right there ballpark with I don't want to use the word with an estimate or a quote because um, there's a lot of things that are still up in the air right now um, but the number that came up with that was uh, like 255 and that would take care of that first section the second section I do not have a number on which is the one that's on the other side of the hill which is right next to um, oh god um, he was the one that helped us out with the sewer. Um, 
anyway, it, it's just the other side of the hill. The, if anybody's been up River Road, you don't know where it is. It's the the area where it's got the um, the other cones. That one right there, oh, I have where I have where it looks uh, like the road's starting to crumble away, and the cones are there. You correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Correct. Um, you know, and and that one right there, I mean that that one's been continual for a while. Um, you know, we we've had a couple of engineers come out and they just kind of looked at it and said, well, you know, it all depends on what do you want to spend one million, three million, five million, or ten million. It's like, okay, so what are your thoughts on on each one of them? And they really didn't come back with it. So it's it's almost like we need to go to them and say, look, you need a scope of work. But now the scope of work is, are we looking at just that one side, which would be the east side of, of the road? And that in turn is where where the slide is um, only, or do you continue going further north and, and tie in the, uh, the culvert that's there at the same time? I mean, the culvert is there. It's functioning at this point in time, but there's also a six by six about three quarters of the way through sticking straight up and down. And it looks like it's kind of holding up the pipe. Mm. Um, I don't see why, to be honest with you, why that's there. Cause I walked all the way through it. Um, it's, it's a little rotted on the bottom, but nothing on the top. So, um, and then you've got way further up, which is around the seven seventeen, right there by the gun club. Um, to be honest with you, I'm keeping an eye on that. Um, it looks like right now everything's stabilized. Um, you know, I've, I put paint out where, where I had any type of a cracking from before. Nothing has, has moved anymore. Um, but worst case scenario at that location is going to be basically finished filling the hole with material um, and then in extending the pipe. Um, so you're talking probably another, if I had to go down that road, um, Materials, what's going to be so expensive? Uh, probably another sixty or seventy thousand just to finish filling the hole. So the four point two million number does that include the second, the one with the cones? And yeah, the yeah, because basically, because I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was working. Yes, I was working with a church, and uh, we were kind of throwing some numbers together real quick this afternoon on a spreadsheet. Bear with me, let me reopen it. And um, the River Road locations, basically, we, th we threw a 1.5 at it. Um, and that would be uh, basically your repair, your engineering. And then if there was another issue on the north end, then that would be some additionals. Again, that may be that, that, that estimate. And again, it's an estimate. You know, I'm, I'm throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks um, as far as what's going on there. Um, I, what I will tell you is is the the second one we'll call it the, the the second one heading north that one there can can maybe ride a little bit but the very first one it has to be taken care of before snow flies um I've lost another half an inch through the weekend and we had no rain so I'm not sure what's going to happen once we get this new rain coming this weekend um and that one there it's be honest with you, it's really not rocket science. I mean, because we're really not messing with the culvert. Basically, what we're doing is bake bank stabilization. The bank stabilization is, is going to be very large rock on the bottom and build your way up the hill. Um, you know, it's, it's like anything else. You've got a good foundation, it'll stay. Uh, we attempted to not go down that road and just build like a little shelf um, to fix that edge of the road. Um, but obviously it failed, you know, we were, we were hoping, but it was too much super saturation and we had no choice. Um, so, um, and we, and we, if we're going to go ahead and throw more at it, um, which we do have to, in my opinion, um, cause that's, that's where you're going to have your failure. You know, river road's going to fail. That's where it's going to be right off the bat. Um, will the other one further up eventually? But you feel like on that one, you feel like you have a solid, um, vision for what needs oh, to yeah. happen yeah yeah that and one there that one there exactly i feel extremely comfortable with that one the one that's further up um the next one i would definitely have with the cones. correct oh and i'm sorry i forgot uh and then you go all the way to the south end heading towards like uh, uh 116 over by where kalashevsky lives um right there by the um by the farms mm -hmm. where that roadway is caving in well that was a million dollar fix back in 2013 2012 2013 
Uh, most of the others have made it, but that section right there is failing again. It's taking, literally, you can, you can look at the guardrail, guardrails dropping down. Um, and that's going to be another one that I would not want to put something on my head. I would definitely go ahead and have it engineered because uh, it was engineered before and it failed. So I don't want to be that third wheel in that one. So your estimate, your 1.5 million estimate for the, the three river road, four river road, there's four river right. road spots, right? Correct. Yep. And, and that, and hopefully that should take care of my engineering. So that you think covers the repair, the bank stabilization repair on the first one, engineering yep. for the other two the other two and then the third one the 717 way up north is something that's not included at all or is that 60 to uh, 70 that, that, included in that um i i we ballparked it out at probably about forty thousand right there um just to throw a number at it okay you know out of out of that 1.5 so that that's pretty much where i think where we're at that that doesn't include engineering though julie really because Kevin, you're not taking in consideration the water that's sheeting off the fields in Pine Nook. But doesn't matter. I say that one again. Yeah. I, I said that that section that's sinking is not being fully yeah. engineered because there's water sheeting off in these large storms or large amounts of water. You're not dealing with the water that's sheeting off the fields in Pine Nook into that road section you and mean that, the ones from up on top of the hill to come come down the road yeah because that that's not anywhere near pine nook well or, or, or am i talking someplace else no but the, it comes off are, the are, field we, are we still at the 500 yeah yeah but, correct yeah it comes down the fields and, and i walked all the way up the hill this morning and there's no place we can put it it has to come down the hill there, there's no place there's right. no other way to but get rid of needs, it. That needs to be engineered how we handle that excess water. Okay. It, it, you just just dumping rock is not gonna is not enough. It's gonna stabilize a road from dropping okay. off like a route two. This is what I worry about. That route two over in Gill just mm -hmm. dropped away. And that's what I'm we're worried about yep. on River Road. Yep. And we need the flexibility to hire somebody to engineer where that how to handle that water coming to the road just dumping rocks we might have to dump rocks to keep from preventing further damage like kevin's talking about but that's that's not the end that's not the correct thing to do and you still are going to have to go through which, the which, which is part of where that other right which, which which that would be actually part of the engineering that would be for poor choice of putting it number two the the second slide yes all right so all right i i'm standing by my experience my experience in rebuilding those kind of roads is a hundred and restoration uh engineering with re permitting and restoration work is a hundred thousand dollars per foot and we're talking just totally got to depend on what you do though just saying it's $100,000 a foot doesn't really make sense. Well, you sense. want a solution that that is permanent. Absolutely. And it could be way more than $100,000 a foot. It could. It could. We don't actually know well, that. I mean, we don't know until we have right. an engineer look at it. Right. Trevor, go ahead. Okay. So um, these are extremely valid points, kind of to where I was mm -hmm. feeling early mm -hmm. on about, you know, how much we ask for. I guess my my biggest concern is that we would um, we would ask for the borrowing once and do the debt exclusion once because we'd have to hold another um, election for the debt exclusion if we did something in the spring, you know. So if we if we ask for three million now to get us taking care of our cash flow, see where the state comes in, get some work going on the project. I know it's going to take time to engineer and stuff. It's just having to go back again and ask for another uh, borrowing. I, I, that's my concern is just, I'd love to just ask for it once. And we're all very good stewards of the town's money. We try to, you know, we don't want to spend it where we don't have to, and it's not a blank check. I just want to be cognizant to not have to call another election for another debt exclusion for another 
two million if we borrow three now. I don't know, uh, but I, I I do agree. Like we know how much we need to do now. We know there's some arbitrary number out there. Uh, we we think five million was the number to do it. Um, but so that's that's my only concern. They're all valid points. You know, we don't really know exactly what the engineering will be for River Road. We we do know we still have a lot of work to do on the other road. So it's really just that the cost for the election and the time and staff and everybody to do that. Um, it'd be nice to if we could settle on one number now instead of doing a number and then another election and another debt exclusion. So that's all. That's my, okay. my Thanks. Comment. Jim, you have a comment? Um, well, won't there kind of inevitably be a election after the spring annual town meeting anyway? No, uh, no. I mean, there is an election, but it's not a debt exclusion election. So a lot of times they need to be, I think we found this with the last sewer borrowing, it had to be a separate thing. It's not just your general election. So it can't be piggyback. Sometimes you can get them together and it doesn't always work that way, though. It costs like $7,000. Hey, can you um, comment on whether we would be able to include wrap it into the election right after annual town meeting? Surprise. The board, <laughs> call it. Huh? the board could call, could add a question to the election warrant. They would have to do that in February, I think, to meet the require the timeline requirements. Um, but yes, you could put something on the election, the annual election. But if something happens over the winter with these types of rain events, that would be, that might put us in a situation where it could be difficult to deal with some of the repairs that might be needed. Right. We do have four point authorization for 4.7 million deficit spending or whatever it is, right? Remember that? Um, Dave, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, just to clarify, because there are a lot of numbers spoken. So is it fair to say that um, everything that Kevin mentioned added up to about 4.2 Two, and that did not include whatever Carolyn was talking about at the end of terms of the additional area that needs some work. Right, right. Permanent fix, right. Or a permanent engineering of some sort. Um, right, but all the- Yeah. Kevin's number of 4.2, Kevin, correct me. Your yeah. number of 4.2 includes 1.5 million estimate for- potentially four repairs on River Road. Uh, it would be one repair, all right, one, one definite repair, a possible second repair, and the rest is engineering. For okay. those repairs, not for those, not including- Yeah, yeah, that, because that, like Carolyn said, I mean, you know, that, that one section right there, on um, you know if, if you go ahead and you include the um uh, the culvert and everything else right there uh, that could very well blow into a four or five million dollar job i mean you know they there, there was so many different things they talked about oh well let's go ahead and let's drive some sheathing in okay well if you drive sheathing in you go so far if you hit something if it's a rock and you're not all the way down to bedrock well then you know what then you just push all that sheathing down for nothing then another one said, well, okay, well, let's, you know, let's build from the bottom up, like we talked about with the other ones with, with the, um, um, uh, with the stone. Um, and I'm trying to remember what the third, third one was the guy came up with. Um, you know, and once again, you know, they, they, yeah, and, 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 yeah, and, and until, until you sign an, uh, <laughs> something with them and say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to give you $50,000 to engineer this. They're just kind of, kind of, throw bat some ideas at you they're yeah. not going to give anything solid but the so, amount to get that something solid is more like the 50 to 100 000 range not the several million range the several right. million is a full-up engineering solution correct right? correct correct so if yeah, we take so you said 4.2 million 4.2 million includes 1.5 estimates so if we back that correct. down that's what 3.7 yeah, so so so, so that's three point seven with nothing on River Road, right? Uh, well, you're gonna need at least two fifty on River Road because what's there now has has to be fixed before right. snowfly, or you will lose the road, guaranteed. That I will so guarantee. So the three point seven, but the three point seven doesn't include that. 
Correct. Right. All right. All right. So you know, let me back up. There's 1.5 million in in that one particular one right there for River Road. So let's take the 1.5 million out of the 4.1, 4.2, and then add in and and, and then add in 300,000 dollars, and okay. that will get me and that will get me by my stabilization of that one embankment. Points. And then, and then the rest of the money is going to have to go to engineering or whatever. So if you take the 1.5, so it's 4.2 minus 1.5 is 2.7. And then you right. add 300,000 back into that. So that's pretty much yep. right at 3 million. Right. And then, Plus and then whatever if, we if, want to spend for engineering. And then if you, I'm assuming you would want to, we would want to continue and uh, do the engineering for the other the other two places yeah i mean because because it because it, once again so. that, that that's that's it's got to get done it's not enough money <laughs> so that's three million just for the repairs and then some amount for an engineering solution and then follow-on repairs right and then god that. knows what the repairs are going to be i mean right you know they come up with something that says okay well it's only going to cost you you know three million dollars or two million dollars or they may come back and say well you know because of this and because you know because once again you know the the, the second one that we're talking about if if we do that one we're, we're going to have to do that one through engineering the whole nine yards okay because it's so close to the wetland it's not an emergency now you might as well go ahead and throw another couple hundred thousand dollars worth of um, uh, permits. Permitting and you know, all that. That yeah. way you can go ask somebody and 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 you know and, and and you'll jump through all the hoops and you'll fill out all the paperwork and you'll spend them thousands of dollars and they'll give you a piece of paper saying yeah it's okay to do what you're going to do, which I don't agree with personally. You know I think that's just a waste of time and a waste of money. Um, you know I would be okay of them going hey don't do this don't do that don't do this. And I'm not going to charge you forty thousand dollars in 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 fees. Um, okay. I'd be all right with that, but okay. know, that's that, so, that's gonna be, that's not going to be cheap engineering for there. No, no, it's not. Jim, you had a question. Um, this is, I guess, for probably for for Carolyn and Trevor. Um, how likely is it that there will be significant state reimbursement for federal? For all I know. I'm I'm on the phone. There is no federal reimbursement. Right. We do not qualify for FEMA. Right. We are constantly on the phone almost every day trying to figure out how we can get the state to give us some money. Am I hopeful that we'll have something at the governor's desk for Thanksgiving? That's what we were told. But I no amount. Nobody's committed to an amount. And the problem is working on River Road involves Army Corps engineers. And as soon as you start doing that kind of thing, you got MEPA and, and natural heritage. And I mean, it, it, $50,000 is not enough for engineering. I can tell you that. Um, we're talking several hundred thousand for engineering, but also these, you can't go in with these kind of, band-aid kind of things i i'm no, I, disagreeing I, I, with with kevin that he's underestimating what we have to do and i am want a engineered solution because it's very complicated um i don't want to spend two or three hundred thousand dollars on dumping rock and then find out that you know we're gonna have to spend four or five million okay i, I we need to we need okay. to think it through and so, I, so let me ask you this: Is that is that a directive from the select board? Because if it is, I'll just go ahead and ask Casey to go ahead. She's going to have to do her part because if we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, so you're going to be talking minimal probably a month, two months before you can actually hire somebody because it's going to have to be a sealed bid. If correct me if I'm wrong, Casey. Yeah. Um. So if that's the case, then then we need to we need to jump into this like now. I know, Kevin, but that's why we're monitoring the road. That's why I have you out there. Right. How much is it sinking? Right. Our intention, just 
a month ago was that we were going to do a mass works project and we we're watching the road in that two what was it three weekends ago we had uh three inches of rain and the road dropped a foot where we had a showers two weekends ago and it dropped a couple inches it's already dropped a couple right. inches more since then and we've had no rain so what's right. going to happen dropped a half an inch over the weekend right There's so no i rain. don't you know is it going to just drop away hopefully not but Oh, yeah, it's if going to. Close, if we close the road for months on end, people are going to be wild. But on the other hand, I worry so much that that's why I'm having Kevin out there. That's why I have John on the police patrols out there. We're watching the road because we don't want anyone to get hurt. But that road is going. And when it goes, it's a multi million dollar fix. And we got to have at least be able to go out and, and look for people to, to, to help us. And I, if you don't want me to do it, it's fine. I am going to town meeting. I will explain this. And if if people do not want to support it, that's okay. But I tried to get them to understand that we're moving as best as we can. Are we going to spend money foolishly? No. Otherwise, we would have already been doing this. But we're waiting to see if we get money from the state. We get see if we can get some more help. What programs are going to be? happening this is just complicated i agree that it's complicated and i agree that the work needs that that some work needs doing and an analysis needs doing i want to be sure that um finance committee is doing due diligence to um agree that the number that's come up with is a reasonable number to move forward with right now. Um, I, and I'm not being very articulate about this, but th this is a debt exclusion vote that we're recommending. So we're recommending that we borrow $5 million in, and it's debt excluded. So that's on top of everything else that, that the town does that we're paying for. Um, so that's a 3% increase, essentially, 3.2% increase more or less in them. Um, in the taxes. And we we have a the select board has good interests of the town in mind going forward. And they y'all want to um accomplish good things for the town and make very strong repairs and make the town bigger and better. But there needs to be financial oversight of it. And once this is approved, um, there's no mechanism for um, uh, pulling it back, right? I mean, we can ask um, the select board to put an item on the town meeting in the spring to rescind that borrowing authority, or we can say that we won't go and have the election and, and borrow the money if we get the money from the town. But there's no there's no oversight for that, right? That that's just the, kind of the select board's decision with with our pushing. So I think that we need to have a um, thorough discussion and thought process on this before the finance committee recommends approval. Um, does anybody else on finance committee have thoughts on where we are right now or a reasonable dollar value or? Jim, go ahead. You're muted. You're muted. Kevin has already identified $4.2 million of expenditures. He's identified $2.7 million with a $1.5 million estimate um, for I mean, that's, that's engineering. Gonna get, that's going to get yeah. spent, right? We want that engineering work to be done. Right. And I think we probably need a... Um, like a contingency factor on the 2.7, right? It, that's probably plus or minus 20% or something. Exactly. So we, that, it probably needs to be plus up a little just right because something million. bad's going to happen. Right. So that puts us right back at 5 million again. Okay. I mean, yeah, none of us like it, but. <laughs> I, 
I did not have the feeling coming out of the last meeting that we had had a, a sufficiently thorough discussion of it. So, Mark, you had a comment? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. When I came out of the meeting, um, the last uh, the last meeting that we had, I, I did not feel like we had um, anything other than um, a, a guess, an, an educated guess, albeit, but a, a guess. Um, after what I just heard... It sounds like there's some engineering that'll go into it, and um, I used that that term a lot last week, um, and that that's really what I wanted to see to make me feel comfortable enough to vote yes, and why I voted no. So, um, given that there's engineering uh, baked into this estimate, um, and it seems like some of the costs have escalated, so I think that like we got lucky and we're. Um, with the cost escalations and the engineering estimates right back in the neighborhood of five million. Um, I, I think that um, I feel more comfortable about it, but not because that was the figure that we picked. Uh, I feel more comfortable about it because we had more time to put into it to come up with a better number. Um, the one question I do have um, for you, Kevin, is um, I, I when we first started talking about this, you listed off a number of roads um, yes, in that estimate. Did, did, did you, um, or, or could, could you list that, that list of roads again? Sure. Certainly. All right. Uh, let's see. Who's road. Okay. Whopping road. Yep. Hawks. Me, Kevin, Kevin, can yes. you just yep. give Mark the numbers? I think what is confusing is people can't follow the numbers. Right. So for each road, can you give Mark the numbers? And okay. Then... Yep. Got it. All right. So Hoosick Road is three fifty five. Okay. Wapping Road is going to be at least another one hundred and ten. Yep. Hawks is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of one ninety two. Okay. County Road is going to be around two thirty five. Waitley is going to be around. Waitley Road is going to be around thirty thousand. Depot Road is going to be close to three hundred thousand. Steam Mill Road uh, is going to be at least 50,000. And then bear with me. Um, I had a miscellaneous of 100,000 just for a couple other small, small things. And that was uh, taking out the 1.5 for the three locations on River Road. But again, River Road, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I'm told, but you know, um, I would think that we would probably want to do some type of stabilization soon, but uh, we can. I'm sorry, guy. Oh, sorry. I um no. keep going. That's, uh, that's about where I'm at. That means we haven't touched um, Little Meadow Road. We haven't mentioned what we're doing along five and ten for Old Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, the backup that is happening there. There's. It's just a continuous thing. Uh, you know, Wapping Road is not completely done yet. Um, sure. um, and we have not finished Pine Nook. So. It, that was going to be my next question is whether or not Pine Nook was included in that. Um, and um, then, not no. that lot. Most of Pine Nook was 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 put in on the first one on that first number that you had because most of our information is has been in there already sorry i'm just trying to reopen again um all right so out of the 1.3 the very first number that we talked about the one point uh one three zero nine zero seven five that covers 99.9 percent .9 of pine nook the only okay. thing i got left on pine nook is I have a little bit of painting to do, and then I've got one culvert to do further over by um, 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 clo close to Keith Crossroad. And that one, that one there, that that's not a big one. That's that's a day job, so you know that's that's not that big of a deal. Um, Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And I forgot to add in, um, and it's not a whole lot of money when you're in the scheme of things, we might as well go ahead and toss in another, uh, I just pay, uh, call it 22,000 for, um, Keith Crossroad, 
which we just finished repairing. And we haven't fixed the issue at the bottom of Pine Nook either. Yes, Pine Nook is not finished. We're applying right. for a grant. Three, three right. options for grants, but that is another few hundred thousands at least. Mm -hmm. um, that if we don't get the grants, we're going to have to do ourselves. But that's a different whole issue. Okay. I'm just, it's stable enough to get through the winter. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the other question that I had, that was, it would be really useful if we could get a copy of this spreadsheet. Okay. So, like, All right. Really useful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll see what I can do about actually. What I can do is I can probably, I can probably forward it to you, Julie. And then if you want, you can oh, go ahead and just. And I can send it out. Sure. All right. Let me see if I can do that right okay. now. Um. Yeah. May I ask one more question? So. Go ahead, Mark. You um, can ask well, all the questions you want. Yeah. The the the, <laughs> the the other question I had was uh for for these roads that are on the west side of River Road where the shoulders have been washed out uh do these repairs uh include restoring the grade of the shoulder of the roads a lot of these just spilled right into river road um i know hawks was real bad hawks almost looks like a roller coaster right now um with how much that that road yeah well hawks it. hawks is yeah hawks right now um hawks right now i'm sitting on hawks at about 192,000 um, because Hawks Road, what we got to do there is we got to put minimum of three cross pipes to reduce the velocity of the water coming down the hill. Um, and, then it's, and then it's got to get paved. Um, Perfect. Realistically, yeah, it all depends on how it plays out. You may end up, I mean, because realistically, when, when you go up Hawks, the paved part, almost all of that is on top of ledge. So if you did anything major up there, now you're talking drilling and blasting. And you do that, then you might as well go ahead and throw another 150 grand on it. Um, um the drilling and blasting is not cheap. So for for some of these, like uh uh I also I I didn't hear Hillside mentioned, and I know Hillside had some areas that washed away into River Road as well. Like, are are we doing any engineering to figure out if we should have better storm systems here? Because I, I appreciate no, we that not. we're repaving, mm -hmm. but I, I really think that we should be looking at what do, what do we do to redirect this water? I, I don't think that we can continue to use um, the same solutions that we had 50 years ago in that area mm -hmm. uh, to 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 redirect this water, um, which was you know my original you know issue with this Warren article last week was that I, I I really think that we need more engineering to figure out what do we do in 2023 and beyond, especially with the roads that meet on the west side of River Road. Um, because mm -hmm. what I don't want to do is invest all this money. Like Hawks is a perfect example. Um, it's not millions, but it's, it's a lot of money. It's close to 200,000. And yeah. if we're not going to do anything with the water that yeah, runs off of Hawks, money. what's the point? So, you know, I, I, I would like to see more engineering with, with, with these, but, um, that, that's, that's, that's all, all right, I wanted I did, to say. I'm sorry, but. Did, did you pick up on the part that we're going to be doing some drainage on there? I Yeah, I did. But is that going to involve engineering or are we just in, throwing, throwing some drains? Yeah, yeah. Are we just going to throw drains in or like, you know, should we be looking at, you know, having, well, you know, some experts come in and, well, and I mean, take you know what? I mean, if you want, we can go ahead and we can, we can engineer the whole thing. Um, we can ship it out and have it engineered. Um, long story short, what I did was I walked along the embankment right after we had the storm. I looked to see where all the water's coming off the hill and I made a mark. And said, okay, here's, you know, go down five, six feet from this major area where all the water's coming off of the mountain. And then go ahead and, and put a catch basin or a drop inlet just below that. And then I walked down further and looked, again, looking at the areas where all the water's coming off the hill. You know, and like I said, you can, you can see it because it's washed. You know, you've got little gullies going down into the drainage that would be going down the side of the road. So once again, I, I looked at another spot and I want to say there was at least three places, but I do whatever anybody wants me to do. I'm open-ended. Tell me what you want. I'll make it happen. Can I, Julie, can I just say, uh, yeah, Kevin, it's, it's great that you came to the meeting. Really appreciate it because it would have been great to have all this great information last time. 
Um, so just really thank you for, for coming. Um, Julie, Absolutely. not to be pushy, sure. but um, I'm holding up another town meeting yeah. to get to. So if you can take my vote by proxy or if we could just move the question and do it and then keep discussing this after, but I probably should. All right, we have a, a, move, a motion to move the question. Do we have a second? Second. James All right, David. we are voting on whether to move the question. David Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Don Presky. We're moving whether or not to move the question. So if you vote yes, then we have to vote with no further discussion. Do, uh, I've is this this may be a moot point to David's discussion about prior votes. Um, mean anything about the prior votes? Because I get two. I get. I don't even. I don't know if it matters at the moment. But I've seen two minutes, and one said. Um, um, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. It it was two separate votes on two separate issues. This is just a motion about whether to move the vote. So if you want to discuss further, then vote no. Okay. Um, then I vote no. Okay. Beth Brown. Beth Brown. Uh, aye. All right. Jim, I didn't ask you yet, right? James Cambius. Correct. James Camby is aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. So that's five one zero. So the motion is to move the vote. So we are now voting. Um, honestly, the motion that's out there is whether or not to reopen this this issue. So here's where I think we are. If you vote yes, that means we will continue to discuss. If we vote no then the the vote that we had last week, which was to support 5 million stands, right? So a no vote means 5 million stands. A yes vote means we have to talk about this. We get to talk about this further. Okay, any discussion on the, oh, we can't discuss anymore, right? We moved the, 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 the question. So Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, no. All right, I'm going to have to take notes. <laughs> uh, Mark Brennan. Uh, yes, Mark Brennan, yes. Yes. James Cambius. James Cambius, no. Beth Brown. I'm sorry. So a yes vote is to keep the five million that we talked about and a no vote no. is to a no vote keeps the five million that we voted on. A yes vote, um, we will go into this and discuss it further. Okay. Um, Beth Brown, yes. All right, I gotta step away from that. No. Is that is there anybody else? Oh, John, John Presky. I I don't know if it, we. I vote no, but we did in a prior meeting on uh october 3rd to prove it before and then we came along so on 11th. um okay hold that thought for one more second okay so the the motion fails four to two four two zero so the five the finance committee's approval for five million dollars holds so to john's point on October 3rd, we discussed it. We voted $2 million to support $2 million. On October 11th, we reopened the question, discussed it further, and at that point, we voted to support $5 million. That vote supersedes the, the $2 million vote. So the yes. vote as it stands right now is for $5 million. The Finance Committee supports $5 million, which is what whoever you are. Select board so, request. So the superseding happens automatically because there was no mention in the minutes that it superseded the prior meeting. Does it is it necessary to say that? I don't know. I'm just whatever the most recent vote is 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 the on on a given issue is the one that holds. So that's automatic. Right. Okay. Okay. I think we're done, Dave, and you can go. We still have minutes to review, but beyond that, unless somebody else 
I just have to run too. So thank you all. Okay. I'm going to adjourn Bye, our Trevor, select thanks. board meeting. Thank you. You guys good with me? Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Kevin. And really right. appreciate you coming. Yeah, and, uh, no problem. Going through all this with us. Yeah, no thanks, worries. Everyone. Thank you. All right. Any anything else on this this issue? This issue being the highway and the five million and all that business. Okay. The last thing we have is the minutes from last meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those? I move that we accept the minutes from the October eleventh meeting. We have a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? All right, Julie Chalpin, I. John Foresky. I wasn't there, so I abstain. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, I. James Cambius. James Cambius, I. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, I. That passes 410. Anything else we want to talk about? Um, Go ahead, John. Uh, there is one, two, three, or four articles that we voted on. But it's not mentioned on the warrant that the finance committee recommends. That's on the warrant because, I received anyway. Yeah, we had not yet voted on them when the warrant was published. So, so the, the warrant, warrant was... had to be posted some point. But when the um, what do you call the thing that we get at town meeting? The guide. The guide. So the guide will have our recommendations in it. Okay. Oh, there is one more thing. I'm sorry. I wanted to talk about. I sent you all a little bit before this meeting a write up of what we had discussed. I will review it based on this evening's discussion and update it. Did anybody have a chance to look at it? And if so, do you have any comments? I did look at it and I thought it looked good, Julie. Thanks. Any other? Jim can probably change six words and it'll sound infinitely better, but, um, <laughs> I did not have a chance to look at it yet. Okay. Yeah, I have one more thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of times during the town meetings, uh, they will ask, somebody will ask what the finance committee, what we discussed during the meeting. But the articles that were discussed on October 11th, I guess that last week, I wasn't there. Do I have a volunteer from the finance committee that can discuss those at the special town meeting? I can give you the article numbers, but I need uh, if somebody asked me what happened on the October 11th town meeting, I'm not going to be able to answer it because I wasn't there. Uh, everybody I, I can, I can do once. that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can do that. Are, are there specific? Well, do you want to yeah, just can, email me the specific articles that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. The write up um, that Julie sent us will also have a lot of that information in it. Right, True. Julie, that's what I read. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to have a meeting? We should probably do we need to have a meeting before like starts maybe 15 minutes before special town meeting? Can we just post in case one just we have in anything case? left to discuss? What? Yeah. Can we post one just in case like for a half yeah. hour before or something? Yeah, half hour before is that what you guys want? Yep. That sounds good. So that'll be at 6 30. How many people do we need for a quorum for our group? Four. Four. I can't. I, I can't attend a town meeting. I'm actually gonna try and get home, which is a, we'll see if I can make it in time. Um, but I don't know that I'll make it. We might still have four. Yeah. It's the twenty third, right? John, yep. David, Mark, and me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think David plans to be there, so I, I think you should have a quorum. Okay, so we will post a meeting starting at at, at six thirty. Um, one thing maybe y'all can do at the meeting. I probably won't make it by then. Um, if I make it at all, is to just approve the write up. Um, it'll be a little late because. The write-up will already be printed, but uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Um, it, since I'm um, be talking at the meeting as the vice chair, I just I'm gonna I want to mention to the town people that 
even though the warrant may say it's recommended by the finance committee, that it's not always a unanimous vote. Yeah, I think absolutely. The town people need to know that. Yeah. And we have a lot of discussion about that. So. Okay. okay. Anything else we talk about tonight? Will we adjourn? Like, Question mark? Yeah. Do we, I take that as a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Uh, we'll call vote. Julie Chalp and I, Don Pereski. Don Pereski, I. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, I. James Cambius. James Cambius, I. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, I. All right. That's unanimous. What do you know? Five zero zero. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. See you next week. Bye.